This is the experiment that we set up to uh, work out the minimum bacteria static concentration for our disinfectant. In this case, the disinfectant is chloros, and we've got a range of concentrations starting at uh, the right hand side 0.5%, with the lowest concentration of chloros at 0.025%, and then we have a control which doesn't have any chloros in it at all. This tube tells us how much our inoculum of E. coli can grow in the conditions that we've given it. Now, if you look at the tubes, uh, you can clearly see that there's growth at 0.25, sorry, at 0.025 and at 0.0625% chloros. And you can probably convince yourself that there's growth in the 0.125% tube. Um, and certainly, if you hold this tube up to the light and swirl it around, you can see there are bacteria there. But it's hard to be sure whether there's any growth in the 0.25% and the 0.5%. So what we then did was to measure absorbance and to plot the values on a graph. So in this graph, I plotted absorbance against the log to the base 10 of the concentration of disinfectant. And I've done this because it compresses the x-axis and it makes it easier to see the shape of the curve. I have also labeled uh, the, the x-axis with the actual concentrations of disinfectant. But remember, the scale doesn't work for, um, for those values. However, it should help us to relate the graph to the experimental data. So you can see that we have high absorbance readings for tubes 2 and 3, moderate one for tube 4, um, and that there was some growth in tube 5 where we had 0.25% chloros because we have a positive absorbance reading there. However, by the time you get to 0.5% chloros in tube 6, there's no growth and the absorbance reading is zero. We can use our graph to work out the minimum bacteria static concentration, because that's the point where if you extend the line, um, it will cross the x-axis. And on my graph, it crosses at log to the base 10 of minus 0.56. That's equivalent to a concentration of 0.275%. So the minimum bacteria static concentration of chloros for E. coli, in my experiment, is 0.25%. So you're asked to think about how you could adapt this experiment to give you not the minimum bacteriostatic concentration, but the minimum bactericidal concentration, the concentration that kills the bacteria. So we know that 0.5% chloros is bacteriostatic, but we don't know whether it's bactericidal. And the adaptation to the experiment that you need to do is very straightforward. All you need to do is to take a loopful out of each of the tubes and to streak them onto an agar plate. If there are live bacteria in there, then you'll get some growth on the plate. And that's what I've done here. I've taken a loopful from the 0% chloros, and you can see that after 24 hours there's a lot of growth there. That's what you'd expect. I've also taken a loopful from the 0.25% and the 0.125%, and you can see that you get growth there as well. But if I take a loop from the 0.5% solution and streak it onto the agar plate, you can see that there's no growth. So we know that 0.5% chloros is not only bacteriostatic, but it's also bactericidal.